Okay. We're going to go over your quiz number two from last week over the alcohols. And we'll start with number one there. The molecule that's shown is linalool. The chemical formula is C10H18O. Molecular weight is 154. The class is a monoterpenol. A parent oil that would have that as a significant component would be coriander, which was in your kit. You could have said lavender. I would have accepted rosewood. Um, I would have accepted bergamot, but no one put that. Um, the chiral atoms is simply the atom there right next to the hydroxyl group. Uh, the carbon that has the hydroxyl group attached to it. That's the only chiral atom. The next one is uh, menthol. And its chemical formula is C10H20O. Molecular weight is 156. Class of the molecule is a monoterpenol. You got away with one there. <laughs> and the chiral atoms, there are three of them. Okay, so there's one there, one there and one there. Still surprisingly there's some difficulty in the class in determining these and it's something that we really need to be able to do is just look at that thing and determine when there are four different substituents on it. You see, This one maybe some people had some difficulty with because they didn't realize that you know, that's a different substituent than that. I don't know. But you have this one, you have hydrogen, and you have this, this, that's four. Uh, this one has the OH, it has a hydrogen, and it has this and this. And this one, probably maybe didn't realize some people that, yeah, that's a CH2, and that's a CH2, but if you continue on down the molecule, there's a point of difference here that's not, that's different than this. So there's four distinctly different substituents there. Um, <laughs> <huh>? <laughs> Parent oil is peppermint oil or corn mint oil, I would have accepted. The sample ID was number five. By the way, the sample ID of number one was sample two. And I think after today's quiz, immediately after, I'm going to go over so you all can like smell the ones that you missed right away, right after, so you can kind of know what you did wrong. Um, okay, the third one is uh, Carvacrol, and its chemical formula, C10H14O, molecular weight 150, it's a phenol, its parent oil is oregano, there are no chiral atoms, and the sample ID was number one. And Carvacrol is spelled C-A-R-V-A-C-R-O-L. Carvacrol. I was lenient on spelling there. The uh, fourth one there is geraniol. It is a a chemical formula of C10H18O. Molecular weight is 154. It's a sesquiterpenol. Sorry. It is, it's a monoterpenol. It's uh, found in geranium oil. You could have said rose oil as well. You could have said palmarosa oil. Um, there are no chiral atoms there. And the sample ID was number seven.
All right. Number 29, what's the most common model terpenol found in essential oils? Everyone should have got that as linalool. Number 30, the uh, proposed a reaction for the formation of the molecule named in number one for linalool. Basically, just like in the notes, start with, say, myrcene, or you could have started with um, cis or transosamine. Add H2O with a little H plus catalyst, and you, you'll end up with linalool. I wasn't really looking for any mechanism there, just reagents and product. But if you put the mechanism out, it's fine. Number 31, name one common sesquiterpenol and what oils it's found in. And that would be, say, alpha santalol, you could have said, found in sandalwood. You could have said cedrol, found in cedarwood. You could have said vetiverol, found in vetiver. Uh, patchouli alcohol found in patchouli, any of those we've talked about would have been fine. And what odor descriptor do we generally associate with the sesquiterpenols would have been woody. Primary, I mean there's others but that's a primary. Um, and number 32, identifying the remaining three unknowns. Number six was coriander, number three was geranium, and number four was peppermint. Um, the biggest error people made on this quiz was they confused linalool with coriander. So I would, I would recommend that you go back to those two and smell them side by side again. You should notice a distinct difference because the coriander has these light aldehydic notes on the top that you should actually smell if you compare it to say an aldehyde C10 that you have that sample and smell that compared to your coriander. You'll smell those types of notes at the top. It's way more complex than linalool. Linalool is a nice, rounded, clean odor, floral. You smell that compared to the, to the coriander and you're going to see a huge amount of difference going on there. And so if you have any questions about these things, always kind of try to associate these complexities in your mind going ahead before you get to class. And then when you get to class, you have the opportunity to smell, if you have two that are close that you're kind of questionable on, just go back and forth with them and then that's when the biggest difference will, will appear to you is when you're smelling them side by side. Okay, number 33. No one got this question right. And I just, some of you were, got a little close, you're on the right track, but you didn't really answer the question. Um, so it says, what are the chemical differences between rose essential oil and rose absolute? Now, a lot of people got that, uh, that part of it. The rose essential oil, of course, is going to be mainly citronellol. When we're talking about Bulgarian. Uh, the rose absolute, as we said in class, is mainly phenyl ethyl alcohol. That's the chemical difference, right? Uh, and then I tell you, the main component of rose absolute is one of the few that has appreciable water solubility compared to other essential oil components. That right there should tell you that that's key to figuring out the answer. Because I'm offering this information to you that just came out of the blue. It's not there for no reason. So the question is, or the, what you're asked to do is propose a logical explanation as to why we see such a different chemistry in the rose absolute versus the essential oil. Okay? Now we didn't say this specifically in class and it's a question that it requires you to think about information that you have and then connect the dots. So what do we know? Well, you should know the process of how an essential oil is made and you should know the process of how an absolute is made. So how is an essential oil made? Steam it's steam distilled, right? And then when you collect that oil, how do, what, what's, after it's distilled over, you collect it, what's over here when you collect it? A separate layer of oil and water. A separate layer of oil and water, right? You've got steam coming up through the plant, the steam is lifting out the oil from the plant, it's condensing over, it comes down into a collection apparatus and you have a huge amount of water with a little bit of layer of oil, right? 
Now, how's an absolute produced? Hexane. You extract it first with hexane, evaporate the hexane, you got the concrete, then you extract that with ethanol, the ethanol pulls out all those volatile polar, more polar components, and there you have the absolute after you evaporate the ethanol. So, totally different process. Why would you think rose absolute has the higher phenylethyl alcohol content when I'm telling you that the phenylethyl alcohol has appreciable water solubility. There you go. The phenylethyl alcohol is in the world's water. It's in the hydrosol. Whereas when you extract the material, it's all there when you pull it out with the ethanol. Okay? That was the key. It, really, it's a simple principle, but it just required a little bit of thought. Okay, the bonus, which we went over in class, so we don't have to do that again last time. Any questions over any of this before we move on? Nothing? Any questions over the quiz you're getting ready to take? What are the answers? <laughs> I'll tell you that later. Pardon? Oh, okay. The, how do those things combine when you form a fatty acid triglyceride? Okay. You got your your um, CH OH, CH2, CH OH. Oh, sorry, CH and then an OH, OH. All right, and then remember you've got these fatty acids. How do these reactions occur? Remember, it's your carbonyl is your reaction site, right? You have an, uh, an oxygen here with electrons that is attracted to the nucleophilic, or to the, this is a, remember, the oxygen's pulling the electron density that way. So this is nucleophilic, it's going to, go up in here and then you lose the water from here. Okay. All right. I'm out of markers again. There's a pink one. Yeah, I can use pink, but it's it's not the greatest either. Might have to do the whole thing on the screen this time. Which is okay, it's what I planned on doing anyway. You can do that. Hmm? Yeah. You can write on the screen? Yeah, yeah the pen is right there. Yeah, and you can change the color. It actually lets you write on the screen? No. You have to open up a program. No, you can, you can uh, hit a color on top of the... All right, I'll, I'll do that in a second. Let me... F All right, any other questions over this quiz? Common name of what? Common name of propanone is acetone, yes. <laughs> Anything else? Okay, then let's get started. Got a lot of smelling to do. 14 samples this week. Okay. <laughs>